Don't try to hide. I know you're in that closet. Did you see me go in the closet? No. Am I in the closet now? Well, no. Then how do you know I was in the closet? Your Honor, I rest my case. Come here, brown eyes. Oh, no. You're not going to get me off this bed. Well, then, what do you think of a negative? I know, I know. You're a woman who's been getting nothing but dirty breaks. Well, we can clean and tighten your breaks, but you'll have to stay in the garage all night. <laughs> Truer words were never spoken. When Groucho Marx uttered those fateful lines in 1931's Monkey Business, unknowingly, he was foretelling the fate of his curly-haired, beautiful, blonde co-star, Thelma Todd. The early 30s were a tricky time for the film industry. Titans of Hollywood were grappling with a new science of sound. Purists like Charlie Chaplin challenged the notion that shattering on films was even necessary. Silent film star Thelma Tatum, she heard the future. She embraced the microphone and Hollywood. She could shape a scene with an inflection lift a verse with a loud laugh and entice a man with a giggle or wisecrack her way out of any situation. Her voice and luminescence propelled her up the ladder of superstardom, but the steps were shaky for Thelma. While most of her films were comedies, ironically, she would come to be known for one of Hollywood's most tragic deaths. Thelma Todd, a.k.a. Hot Toddy, knew she was meant for more. Before coming to Hollywood, she'd won the title of Miss Massachusetts. When she arrived in Tinseltown, she headlined a few silent films. Her looks were her hook, but Thelma was more than just a pretty face. Movie mogul Hal Roach agreed, roles expanded. Stars like Laurel and Hardy, Buster Keaton, and the Marx Brothers lined up to have her alongside them in her best slapstick comedies. By 1935, at the age of only 29, Thelma Todd had risen to become the Lucille Ball of her day. Thelma had a penchant for the bad boys. Trouble was all around her. After a two-year marriage to part-time mobster Pat DeCiso, a guy who once beat Todd so badly she had to have an emergency appendectomy, Todd wanted more. While the film business paid well, back then salaries weren't private plane and mega yacht numbers, so Hot Toddy decided to open up her own seaside cafe. But she needed investors, people she could trust. Enter director Roland West. A few years earlier, he had cast Todd in his film, Corsair. While the film languered at the box office, an affair between the two erupted. West was already married to D-list actress Jewel Carmen, but he couldn't resist our ice cream blonde. Thelma got West to invest in her dream eatery, Thelma Todd's Cafe. The place was a hit with tourists, the Hollywood elite, and the after hours set. Mobster Lucky Luciano was the kind of guy they made monster movies about. Hard-boiled with the heart of a hyena and the soul of a shrew, he made millions as far back as the 20s in bootlegging, prostitution, blackmail, and illegal gambling. One afternoon, he surprised Thelma with a visit at her cafe. Lucky wanted to set up an illegal gambling parlor on the second floor of the bustling eatery. In a move that some theorized was the reason for her death, Thelma turned him down flat. I think we should take a break for a while, you know, mm. just see what happens. I, I don't think it's going to work out, Lucky. This is very unfortunate for you.
on Saturday, December 14th, Todd attended a Hollywood party at the legendary hotspot, the Trocadero. Among the invited guests was her hoodlum ex-husband, Pat. The two exchanged heated words. Pat left in a red-faced fury. Todd drank more than ever. Here's where the waters get a little, a little cloudy, depending upon the source. What happened next is up for interpretation. No, Mom. What's wrong? Is it Pat? He's just so drunk. It's wrong, Pat. It's, it's everything. It's lucky it's the restaurant. I don't know what to do. Let's freshen this up. Whatever the specifics, this much is certain. On Monday morning, Thelma was found in Roland West's garage, dead in her car. The ignition was on and the car was out of gas. Autopsy reports her blood alcohol content was a 0.14. She must have had a dozen drinks that night. <laughs> had she lived, she probably wouldn't even remember how she got here. Some theorize that after she left the club, Thelma had an unlucky run-in with Lucky Luciano. After she had thwarted his gambling scheme, he decided to snuff her out to tidy up any loose ends. Another rumor floated around Hollywood was that Roland West was furious with jealousy and frustration when Todd finally arrived drunk at his door at 4 a.m. It said she grabbed the car keys and ran to the garage to escape his anger. I can run the cafe on my own. I got friends. Oh yeah? Yeah, good. Yeah. Where, where, where are you going? I'm your last friend, honey. You got friends? I'm your last friend, toots. It was a cold night. She started the car, engaged the heater, but before she hit the road, she took a moment to compose herself and, and clear her head. But when you've had that much to drink and several heated confrontations in one night, it's easy to close your eyes and doze off. With a quick buildup of carbon monoxide in a small garage, Hot Toddy's effort to compose became Sleeping Beauty's final moment. I'm here for a nice quiet rest and I don't want to be bothered by any men. Yeah, Thelma Tide said that. She was one of cinema's original talking starlets. She lived a life most could only dream and died in a nightmare everyone would fear. To this day, Thelma Todd's apparition is Hollywood's most infamous ghost. Her presence is felt at the scene of her death and her spirit is seen walking the steps between her cafe and the garage where her body was found. I'm Tom Gregory, and that's Classic Hollywood.